Okay, so here's a summary. And I'll write this out also and, and put it in one of these assignments pages, okay? Okay. For the first set of experiments, we're using the dominoes, okay? The ball has a non-zero vertical velocity initially because in every case, it's got at least a little bit of downward slope, right? The ramp will have a little bit of downward slope, and we assume the ball comes off the ramp at the same angle that it was moving down the ramp. Now that angle immediately starts changing as gravity takes over, and you get the parabolic path. That's the projectile phase of the motion, right? So the ramp gives the projectile an initial velocity. We're going to assume that vertical velocity is zero because it's a whole lot easier to analyze. The other one is, this is really easy to analyze. The other one is pretty hard to analyze. So I don't want you to start with the hard analysis. And we're going to learn how, well, we're going to learn a lot of things when we do the correct analysis. But I'm not going to ask you to do that right away, okay? Now you should have the tools to do it having been over the chapter in projectiles and everything, so theoretically you could, but the mathematics is a little tricky. So we'll go over that. Okay, so for now you're going to assume that this, the fact that it has a non-zero vertical velocity, has a negligible effect on the horizontal range. That effect isn't negligible. Okay. We want to calculate the speed of the ball at the end of the ramp, which is the same as the speed of the projectile as it starts its free fall, right? So you're going to do that based on your data, and your data consists of how far it went and how far it fell, how far it went horizontally and how far it fell. So you're going to be able to analyze the vertical and the horizontal motion, and it's a very, very easy analysis, and there are things in the analysis that repeat for every calculation, okay? For every different slope, you're going to have one thing in the analysis is always going to be the same, which is going to make it really easy to do your analysis. Now, I want to make sure that you see that, so I want you to send me those calculations for your first four results, the, the ones with the other dominoes and the four different configurations. I want you to send those to me as soon as possible. Show me your calculations, your reasoning short email or picture, okay? It would take long to type the thing out. I find that easier than sending a picture, but I can read a picture as long as it's legible as easily as I can type out. I can read all your handwriting, I think. Okay? That makes sure it's readable. Okay? So you're going to send me that, and then I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and do it for the 20 or so results you got using the uh, yeah, screw-based mechanism, right? My greatest invention. Okay? Uh, then, that's it. Uh, because if you get this right for the four, it's going to take you ten minutes to do it for the other twenty. Okay? Because there's something you can do every time. And uh, it's not going to be the case when we take into account the fat beat fact that we have a non-zero angle with horizontal at the beginning, okay? That's going to get tricky. And we're probably going to have you set that up in a spreadsheet after we do the analysis. Just for your own sake. It takes a little while to set up the spreadsheet, but then boom, you get it all. Okay? So I'll have you do the calculation probably for, you know, for these four later on in the week. Okay? And then give you some explanation how to set it up in the spreadsheet. How many of you have done stuff with spreadsheets? Cell references? It's pretty easy. Pretty easy. I'll, I'll demonstrate it. Won't be a problem. Uh, once you know the steps of the analysis for that more difficult case, well, this isn't negligible, uh, then uh, it won't be hard to set up a spreadsheet. Okay. For each rubber band, calculate the length when supporting each load, okay? You've already got the 
positions of the endpoints of the rubber bands for each load. And you know how much load it was. You know how many grams of mass the rubber bands are supporting, right? So from your data, you're going to be able to figure out the length of each rubber band at each load. Right? That's real easy. Just subtract the two numbers. Okay? And if you want to put them in the spreadsheet and do that, okay, but you know, in your calculator, you don't have that many calculations to do. You'll have three calculations for each of five trials. Okay? That's 15 calculations. It won't take you long. Uh, but if you want to mess with the spreadsheet, that's okay too. Uh, so, the tension is going to be the supported mass times acceleration of gravity. Okay? That's the information I'm giving you. What should use the mass in kilograms and acceleration of gravity in meters per second squared. Okay? And you can use tau. Okay? Because we can always take off 2% if we need to to get 9.8. Okay? Uh, then for each, well, you're graphing tension versus length. And here's tension, right? Your tension this way, length this way, and you got a sketch. That sketch will have a shape. It's probably not going to be a straight line, and it shouldn't be a straight line because rubber bands are not linear with length in the force that things are, okay? A clumsy statement, but I think you maybe know what I mean. You'll see. Still, then I want you to sketch a straight line to fit the data. So, for example, if your data give you points that look like this, probably won't look like this, um, but you're going to get lost my smooth curve there, rough place on the board. Uh, if you get a graph that maybe looks like this, it won't, okay? But it might look something like that. It's probably not going to dip down here. Now what it won't look like, I think, is something that looks like this, okay? If you get that, you did something wrong. Okay, well, you got your data points. So for your data points, and I don't want you to do this by using a regression tool. I want you to do this by honestly trying to make a straight line that comes as close as possible on the average to these points. Probably should have made it a little higher here. It's way too far from this point, okay? If I increase the slope a little bit and change it a little bit, you take a piece of string. Say where you think the line is closest, okay? Don't expect the line to go through the origin. Expect it to go close to the origin, but don't expect it to go through the origin. So don't use the origin as a data point. Okay. Make sense? Simple. Okay. Try to keep this video short and let you out of here as quickly as possible. Not that I'm in a hurry to get rid of it. Welcome to stick around a little while. But uh, I'll be here for a while. Okay. And I know you have nothing else to do in your life, so I expect everybody to be here all afternoon. Okay. Well, maybe not. Okay. For the oscillating system, the one where we counted the... Okay. For each mass in the oscillating system, find the time per cycle. Well, you know how many cycles there were in 30 seconds. It was a 30 second count. Sketch a graph. Time per cycle versus length. That makes no sense. I need length over here. mass, okay, and sketch a smooth curve through two points and the origin, okay. Now, this curve might or might not look something like this. Okay, if the curve looks like, if the data points are like this, then you need a curve that goes through here and through here. So there's obviously some curvature to it, right? Now, it could be that they make a straight line, or it could be they curve down. They're probably not going to do this, though. Okay? That 
pretty much impossible. It, physics behaves the same here as it does everywhere else. Okay. Make sense? That's all. And we'll do something with that. Then find the length vectors for the three rubber bands. You've already, most of you already sketched length vectors, right? Okay. And the length vector would, you know, go from the paper clip out to the other end of the rubber band, right? If you do that, then it's representing the force on the paper clip, okay? Which would go, it goes out away from the paper clip. Now, if you drew the length vector a different way, that's okay, but your force vector will go away from the paper clip, right? Doesn't really make a difference how you do your length vector, but it's more convenient if it goes in the direction of the force. That's merely convenience, not much. As long as the force vector comes out in the right direction, it's fine. Okay? Then find the length vectors. Well, find the length vectors for three rubber bands. Then find the magnitude of the force for each rubber band from your force versus length graph for that rubber band. Right? Make sense? You go here and find the force. You know, if, you, if the length is this, then the force would be this. Or if you want to use your curve, the force could be this. Okay? And here's your force, here's your length. Measure the length, whatever the length is, find that in your graph, project up to either the straight line or the curve, or project up to both if you want to compare them. There probably won't be that much difference. Probably won't be this big. Okay? Probably less than a 10% difference, depending how accurately you did your work. So it won't make a huge difference which one you use. Then, find the I and J components of each force vector. Now to do that, you're going to want to sketch an X and Y axis. I would advise sketching your X and Y axis so that the so that one of the axes goes along one of your length vectors, right? Because that, 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 then you won't have to calculate two components. I mean, you already know the two components, okay? Because one of the components is zero. The other two are going to have non-zero components. You're going to have to calculate them. Or if you want, you put a scale on it and just estimate them with projections. It's just sines and cosines. You use the sine to calculate one, the cosine to calculate the other, right? Okay. So that's the start of your analysis. And so we'll follow up with a little bit more, but that's all I'm going to ask for early next week. And I do want you to do that, because I don't think it'll take more than an hour to do it all. At the rate you guys are working, maybe half that, because uh, we've already got a lot of it done. Okay. And I, again, for money, I'm just talking about the four results for the for the ramps. Okay. Uh, so, should be a, a, a pretty easy set of things to do. But once you get that to me Monday, and just to make sure you're doing this right, I calculate that as soon as you have time and send it to me. Then I can email you back and say, yeah, you're doing it right. Okay. Or, ah, uh, you need to. You need to do this or that. Fair enough?